Good morning, Tacoma New Life Church. Uh, today is September 22nd. It's Tuesday, and we will be starting a new five-day Bible reading plan this morning. And it's called Enemies of the Heart. And it's focusing on breaking free from the four emotions that control you. And so this morning, we will talk about the heart briefly. And over the next four days, we will be identifying the four enemies of the heart, trying to figure out how that uh, this relates to us, uh, speaks to us where we are, and how uh, the gospel, and by God's grace, that might uh, change. God might take us out of that, and we would see uh, some improvement in our lives, but focusing in on our hearts. You know, the... the the heart is like a volcano and you know it's, it's always something's boiling right inside and it's just ready to erupt at any given moment you know what will set it off we no one knows right we have no idea uh when will it erupt uh your guess is good as mine and i'm pretty sure that people who study like volcanoes they can kind of like guess when that's gonna happen but they're never exactly sure until it starts to erupt and they're like it's erupting right now you know and the funny thing about that is that our author says that we have the tendency uh, to monitor our actions and our behavior yet we spend little time monitoring the condition of our hearts right making it like a simmering volcano right awaiting to erupt and it's kind of ironic right because we as christians we are so concerned about how we act how we present ourselves and I don't think we do a lot of self-reflection or monitoring of our heart it's only when something happens right when we act a certain way or we react a certain way that we realize that we might have a problem with our heart we you know we're actively conscious about the way we present ourselves yet the thing that we should be worried about most is the condition of our hearts and when I think about like an erupting volcano and the condition of our hearts, I don't know why. I'm just reminded of simmering pasta sauce. And I can't cook a lot of things, right? I'm not really good or in the kitchen. I'm not that confident in the kitchen. Uh, but one thing I can do is I can heat up some pasta sauce. And I've obviously learned this from learning lessons. But you know what happens when you cook the pasta sauce too high? It starts to get too hot it starts to bubble and then it begins splattering everywhere and so when it comes to our heart right i feel like that's kind of how our heart is right something might cause our heart to boil just a little too much and a little too fast and we find ourselves blowing up right we blow up with emotions we blow up with a rage we blow up because we're frustrated and a whole lot of other things and so when it comes to your heart, right, what's the heat that causes you to start erupting? Right? What factors contribute to your sauce bubbling and splattering everywhere? You know, it's something that we really, really need to not only think about, but we need to become more aware and conscious about it. You see, today in our scripture, we have Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 20. And for the sake of time, I won't be reading that for you. Uh, so make sure that you... Make sure you go and read that uh, at some point today or pause this video and then come back and, and finish it. But I'll kind of explain to you what the passage is about. You see, in this passage, you have Pharisees and scribes who are pretty upset at Jesus and his disciples. And uh, their, their quote, right? They, they're they mad because, quote unquote, Jesus and the disciples are breaking the traditions of the elders. It's a great reason, right? Like you're kind of disrespecting the laws or the rules in place that our elders have um, you know established for for years but what are they mad about right check it out they're mad because the Jesus and the, or the disciples they didn't wash their hands before eating and in 2020 right where COVID is like one of the chaotic things that we have to deal with that would yeah that's like considered a crime but here in our scripture they're not mad because of sanitary or hygiene reasons right they're not mad because they could spread disease like and if that was the case i get it but it wasn't you see they 
They were mad at a tradition established by their elders being broken as if it was some sort of law of commandment from God. Like the law that or this commit or this tradition that the elders had established, they put it on this high pedestal equivalent, if not superseding the law of God. That's what they're upset about. But Jesus responds but with something along the lines of but you're okay with breaking God's commandments for the sake of tradition, right? They're more upset over this than someone not following the law, right? Does that make sense? And, and this is the issue, right? And Jesus points this out blatantly for them. He says, this is the issue, you guys. You honor God, right, with your lips, but your hearts are far from God, right? They worship in vain and their doctrines are not of God, but they are of man. In other words, outwardly it looks like they are faithful to God. Man, outwardly it looks like they have they have these great traditions. It looks like they are so dedicated to following God and following God's way. Yet in reality, they're just faithful to themselves, right? They're just faithful for the sake of being, you know, looking good to their fellow man. And what makes this passage even more uh, hilarious? Is that as Jesus is addressing them, he just stops talking to them. And he turns and he looks at the crowds. Right? He starts, Jesus starts addressing the crowds, totally ignoring the Pharisees. And then he says something along the lines of this. Right? He says, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person right? in, in response to eating with unclean hands. But what comes out of the mouth, right? that is what defiles a person. Right, this defiles a person like what, what, what essentially is coming uh, from our, our mouth because it proceeds from the heart. Right? That's a mouthful. And so for basically, right, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts. This is what Jesus tells us. He says, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Right? These are the things that defile a person. These are the things that are, we are heart arboring in, in our heart but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone if anything it might make you sick right but that's it you see in other words the, the point that jesus is making is that whatever is simmering in your heart will eventually find itself find its way to the surface right like whatever is in here in your heart is eventually going to come out into the surface and something might bring it to a boiling point to where it comes splattering out and so for example if lust is simmering in your heart then being around with lustful temptations guess what you may erupt and that might lead you into sin or com committing lustful actions and hopefully hopefully not but sexual immorality you see if anger is simmering in your heart then someone who is testing your, your patience may cause for you to ex explode and go off on the person saying something maybe that you later <laughs> regret. You see, if greed is something that is simmering in your heart and there's an opportunity to make a lot of money in a, dis a dishonest way, your greed may make you succumb to that temptation and make you want to take on that business venture right the opportunity while forsaking your integrity as a christian that's why it's so important for us to continually monitor not only our actions but our hearts because whatever is here once again something might trigger it and make it come to the surface i think psalm 139 verses 23 to 24 fits perfectly here that's not a part of your Bible reading uh, this morning. But this is what it says. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And so church, as we get ready to identify the four enemies of our hearts, uh, let us prayerfully ask God to continually search our hearts to help us see how these four enemies are currently affecting us in this season and will we ask God for his strength and wisdom 
to lead us in his way so that we can overcome the four enemies that potentially uh, put our hearts at risk. And so we we'll ended there this morning. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you this wonderful Tuesday. I pray that you have a blessed day. May you go in peace. Amen.